the Battle of the Tasman. 15 Wallabies. 40,000 fans at the Sydney Football Stadium. 15 All Blacks. Live under lights. A one-off test match for the Bledisloe Cup. After their record-breaking win against Western Samoa, the Aussies are on a roll. Will the All Blacks have what it takes to stop the Wallaby Tri Machine? Primetime Rugby. Australia and New Zealand. Live Wednesday, 7 o'clock on 10. Welcome back. Well, day two of the Women's Volleyball Grand Prix tournament saw Australia put up a proud fight against the might and spikes of world number three, Japan. But first on court, the battle between nations one and five, classy Cuba and China. A typically One, tactical eight, start four, for the nine. Cubans, setting up play for their big the spikers. Oh, that Ooh. was tight on the net. The tournament well, favourites took Torres, the first Costa. seven points. Some good blocking put China back in the first set, but it went to the Cubans 15-10. And their strength continued. Luis. Oh, into the crowd she goes. And again. Costa. Luis. Oh, spike of the match. Three sets was all it took. Cuba downing China 15-10, 15-10, 15-4. It took Australia a set to warm to the fast tempo of the Japanese game, but in the second they turned in their best performance to date against the world number three, taking the first three points. Australia extended the lead to 9-4, but Japan came up with the big spikes at the right time to win the set and the game 15-2, 15-10, 15-5. A devastating finish gave Australia a 4-0 victory in today's first men's hockey test against South Korea at the State Sports Centre in Sydney. Now the Aussies led 1-0 at half time but then came home with a three goal flurry. A 4-1 win over New South Wales last night had the Koreans full of confidence and that's just how they started. The Kookaburras forced to scramble, the visitors dominating the early stages. Jay Stacey relieved the pressure for the Aussies, this goal giving the home side a 1-0 half-time lead. After the break, the Koreans again took control, but like the first half, they couldn't find the goal. The Kookaburras didn't have the same problem, centre Stephen Davey sparking a run of goals. A double for him and a late goal to Greg Corbett, making it 4-0, putting the Kookaburras one test up with the second to be played tomorrow. Well, it wasn't completely one-way traffic, but Dream Team 2 continued to roll towards gold at the World Basketball Championships in Toronto. The Russians were the latest to fall to the might of the NBA, and the Americans will face Greece in the semi-finals. Like other teams at the championships, Russia had to take it to USA if they were to have any hope. And for most of the first half, it was a tight contest. Although the Dream Team certainly had the firepower. Whenever Russia made their moves, USA had an answer. Coleman's block, an ominous sign. Russia played steady and had their moments of glory. Goes to Murkoff with a duck at the other end. But USA were too good. 17-point victors, but Russia, without doubt, gave them a run for their money. In today's other game, Croatia continued their good form with a solid win over Greece. The Croatians now go on to play Russia in the next round, while Greece front up against the Dream Team. Question time. What price Nick? That's what's being asked of British bookies today, rather bookies anywhere, as the British Open champion Nick Price grabbed a decisive lead after the second round of the US PGA. The Zimbabwean is five shots clear after a round of 65 and on target for back-to-back -back majors. Craig Parry is at one under, leading five Aussies into the last two rounds. Ian Baker-Finch, Dave Graham and Brett Ogle all missed the cut. If everyone thought things were going to get hot at the Southern Hills course, Zimbabwe's Nick Price was going to show them just how much. Riding high from his recent British Open win, Price was on fire and kept up the pace all day. Is it ever? He shot a 5 under 65, finishing day two, 8 under the card. Nick Price to take a four-shot lead. No such luck for Price's overnight co-leader, Colin Montgomery. Whilst Price had the golden touch, the temperamental Scott couldn't do anything right. He dropped six shots to finish three over the card. Craig Parry was the best for the Aussies. At three under, he was in second place. But double bogey, the last to finish one under. Greg Norman had a mixed day. After carding 12 consecutive pars, he finally cracked an eagle on the difficult par 5 13. 
Norman Eagles 13 to break his string of 12 consecutive pars. Blaine McAllister shot a superb round of 6 under 64. He narrowly missed equaling Raymond Floyd's 1982 course record 63. He mightn't be in contention to take the title, but the shot of the day has to go to Tom Lehman for this effort on the 17th. Coming in. And three over par going out. And probably going to make the cut. Meanwhile, having missed the cut, it was an emotional moment for legend Arnold Palmer as he strolled up the 18th in his 37th and final PGA appearance. A fond farewell to one of the greats. The par. Get, Get in the hole. Yeah. Arnold farewelling the Southern Hills in style. Certainly did. Now still to come, the Manicato goes Spanish. A Formula One Monza boycott and the undisputed queen of the 400 metre hurdles. England's Sally Gunnell takes out the European Championships and sets her sights on golf. Ice. Ice beer. A unique method of brewing where the brew is super chilled in special chambers until ice crystals form. The crystals are removed, creating a refreshing, easy to drink beer with a taste and clarity unsurpassed. Only one brewer in Australia has the secret of ice. That is why there is only one ice beer. Han Ice. The Ice Age is just beginning. Where I can be cool, where I can be hot, where I can be up, where I can be down, where I can belong, where I can be happy, where I can be wild. Where I can be free, where I can be me. There are thousands of different road surfaces, but only one shock absorber that knows the difference between them all. Munro Sensor Track. You've got just four days to grab this season's best snow buys at Ski Bonkers Crazy Ski Sale. We're talking big name ski gear at mad prices. Waterproof gloves from $16, ski poles from $25, new season skis from $199, on trot parkers from a ridiculous $179, kids ski wear from $29, and ski suits from $159. Ski Bonkers Crazy Ski Sale, now on at the Melbourne Showgrounds. You'd be mad to miss it. He's an eight-year-old battle station. This is my house. I have to defend it. The number one box office comedy smash. Okay, come and get me. Macaulay Culkin declares war. Yes. In Home Alone. It's on time. Sunday. Now to the gallops and the two big races today, both 1,200 metres, the Manicato and Premier Stakes. But to Mooney Valley first and six-year-old mare Spanish mix, spicing up the Manicato Stakes. They're racing. Favourite Zaguallo set the Manicato Stakes pace, pressured by Hariba for most of the 1,200 metres. That was expected, this wasn't. Here comes Spanish Mix on the outside, coming at promise, Zaguallo has beaten the... Stephen King riding the 15 to 1 shot to her first win since January last year. And the mayor, Spanish Mix, is rowing away for a big win. Spanish Mix by two and a half lengths to Primacy. Shimon de Fer A good start to the Premier Stakes at Sydney's Rose Hill. Larry Cassidy securing the early lead for Stormy Regent and keeping the 10 to 1 chance there to the straight. Then came the challenge from the favourites. Keltree's getting to him. Big Dreams are squeezing up on the rail. Keltree, Stormy Regent. And big dreams. Cal Stormy Regent has the head in front. Big dreams on the inside is driving as they go to the line. It's awfully close. Stormy Regent hung on by a half head. Big dreams a whisper behind, then Keltries. The year that Formula One would rather forget continues to lurch between drama and setback. The sports governing body confirmed today that the Italian Grand Prix, set down for Monza in September, has been cancelled, and that's due to fears over the track safety. The World Motorsport Council ordered changes be made to the Monza circuit after the deaths of Roland Ratzenberger and Ayrton Senna saw Formula One rethink its safety standards earlier this year. 
Those changes can't be guaranteed by Italian authorities, and so the race has been cancelled. While the administrators grappled with Formula One's new direction, the drivers were content with duelling for grid positions in first qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Championship leader Michael Schumacher shook off the controversy surrounding the Benetton team over the pit lane fire two weeks ago, the German clocking fastest time to take provisional pole. Britain Damon Hill survived the spin in his Williams Renault to sit second on the grid, with teammate David Coulthard parking his car in the dirt after setting third fastest time, almost a second behind Schumacher. Well, the brilliant sunshine of the Wit Sundays on Queensland's north coast was the backdrop for today's Laguna Keys Outrigger Classic. More than a dozen crews from all over the Sunshine State fought out a series of races throughout the day with the men and women from Sunset Bay proving too good for the opposition. The action wasn't restricted to the water with beach sprints and a tug of war making the contestants work hard for those spoils on offer. Good to see. Melinda Gainsford and Cathy Freeman are becoming familiar faces on the athletic circuit around the world, but one name promises to stand out at this month's Commonwealth Games in Victoria, Canada. Britain's Sally Gunnell, the Olympic, Commonwealth and World 400 metres hurdles champion, last night added the European title to her tally. Now she joins a select group of athletes who've held all four crowns together. And the Commonwealth Games countdown continues along with our Telecom Telecard Rome Trip for Two competition. But first to last night's winner of the Telecard and cordless phone. Vicky White, no relation I guarantee you, from Queenla Cleveland in Queensland. Congratulations to you. And now, here's your chance to enter. Hi, I'm Brooke Hanson. All you have to do to enter the Telecom Telecard trip to Rome and have a chance to win a nightly prize of the Telecard and Telecom cordless phone is ring Sports Tonight prize line 00556062 Who says Chooks can't swim? Brooke Hanson, another Aussie 200 metre breaststroker with a big chance. Now your big chance to win a 10 day trip for two to Rome's World Swimming Championships next month. All you'll need is a passport. This major prize includes airfares, hotel accommodation, spending money and passes to the championships. Plus, a chance each night for one viewer to win a Telecom Telecard with $250 credit, plus a Telecom cordless phone. And all you have to do to enter is ring our prize line, 00556062. Now, back to the baby of the team. Looking forward to seeing you poolside at the World Championships on behalf of Telecard and Telecom Dolphin Swimming Team. I'm Brooke Hanson. Stay tuned to Network 10 Spots tonight. H and R Block go over your tax return more than once to find every cent you're entitled to. Ice. Ice beer. A unique method of brewing where the brew is super chilled in special chambers until ice crystals form. The crystals are removed, creating a refreshing, easy-to-drink beer with a taste and clarity unsurpassed. Only one brewer in Australia has the secret of ice. That is why there is only one ice beer. Han Ice. The Ice Age is just beginning. David and Maria go to school. Each enjoys the company of their friends, but at the moment, David and Maria cannot live with their families. If they did not have adolescent community placement, they would be homeless. You can make a difference.
always known it. There's nothing tougher than hard yakka. We don't charge you an upfront fee, and we get you the maximum tax refund returned in around 14 days. Well, the umpires have called strike three. Major League Baseball is out. The players' strike has begun and there's a big chance it won't end this year. And that's meaning that there'll be probably no World Series. Now, effectively, that means the divisional titles are settled. In the American League, New York finished ahead in the East, Chicago claimed the Central and Texas got the West. The wild card there would go to Cleveland. The national leaders are Montreal, the Reds and the Dodgers. The Braves would collect a wild card. But this isn't a, stri a strike about baseball, it's a strike about money. After all, no play means no pay. Three, two pitch to Griffey. Boom! My, oh my! It's a cheater! It's a dinger! It's out of here! It'll Ken Griffey Jr. of the Seattle Mariners is in a pack of half a dozen sluggers who still have a shot at breaking the single season home run record. A strike would instead shatter Griffey's chance to perhaps double or triple the one million dollars in commercial deals he reportedly made this year. Holy cow! Even if a strike is averted or quickly resolved, the major leagues may have already done major damage to the image of their teams and players. Attorney Robert Reich helps companies and ad agencies make sports endorsement deals. The one thing a sponsor wants to avoid is uncertainty. Baseball has served up plenty of that in recent years, and some star players have been their own worst enemies, refusing interviews, pulling pranks, failing drug tests. Then, too, other sports leagues, especially the National Basketball Association, have done a much better job of promoting its up-and-coming players, such as Shaquille O'Neal, a handful of baseball superstars might rise above the lack of league support in snaring endorsements, but a prolonged strike would likely spur many sponsors to drop lesser lights. The strike wipes out games in September when minor leaguers are often called up. Baseball card companies won't have a chance to see them in their major league uniforms before cards come out in the spring. Card collectors, though, aren't likely to be thrown by a strike. The players pictured can only wish their end of the baseball business would be so dependable. What about the fans? Well, tomorrow, the greatest fun run in Australia is on the city to surf. Around 40,000 pairs of feet will beat that bitumen to Bondi Beach. So for those of you taking part, we leave you with a bit of inspiration. And remember, it is all about having fun. And you can catch all the highlights exclusive on 10 at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. August 13, that is Sports Tonight. I'm Matthew White. Russell Fairfax is in tomorrow night. I'll see you next time. Stepping out with my baby Can't be wrong, cause I'm in right Ask me when will that day be The big day may be tonight Sports Tonight was proudly brought to you by Hard Ice.